So hey, it's Jordan, Ancient Literature Dude, back with you again. And I want to talk to you today about the horror genre, and more specifically, horror literature. What got me into it, why I love it so much, and how it continues to influence me and inspire me even today. And so to start off with, I was a very scared child. Uh, I was very prone to nightmares. I had them very frequently. Uh, it may be because I grew up in the 80s, the late 80s, and there were a lot of horror movies uh, floating around anyway. But for whatever reason, I had very vivid nightmares about monsters and ghouls and goblins and demons and things like that. And uh, I was just a very terrified young child. And uh, this extended to a kind of a social anxiety. I was very shy. I didn't like to leave the house. I certainly didn't like to be left alone. Uh, in fact, when I was in preschool, I believe it was, it may have been kindergarten, but very early on in school, I was left by an older child in a dark classroom and locked inside. Uh, I, to this day, of course, I don't know why. Uh, I don't know if it was a prank or, or just a, a mistake or something, but uh, it was uh, a pretty formative experience for me. Uh, probably contributed to a lot of the social anxiety that I continue to experience later in my life. But uh, in any event, I took all of this fear, I suppose, and uh, for whatever reason, I became fascinated by it. Uh, I was very drawn to horror movies. Uh, I specifically remember the Friday the 13th stuff, the first Jason movie, and the second one, I have a very vivid memory of the one, whichever one it was, where Jason is on a boat and he kills someone from under the deck with a harpoon and later kills, uh, I believe, a, a, a couple. Uh, I can particularly remember a woman being killed uh, against a window or something and just the blood splattering everywhere. Very uh, graphic, violent stuff that I probably shouldn't have been watching at such a young age. I, was, I couldn't have been more than five or six. But uh, it was on TV, you know, uh, it was there. So uh, for whatever reason, I found it very compelling, despite my fear. Uh, it was a kind of well-known phenomenon in horror where you almost can't look, but you can't force yourself to turn away. Um, I was very fascinated by it. And, and I've always been the kind of horror viewer that is genuinely scared to this day. Um, I remain afraid. I, I really uh, get into a film if I'm watching it or a story if I'm reading it. And I feel the fear very tangibly. And I make myself a part of the story and allow myself to believe. And that makes the horror stronger. Because to me, horror is largely about that feeling. That very primal emotional reaction that we get to the story that's being told. But horror can be fun and creative and funny and even artistic as well. Uh, I believe I've mentioned before that I have distinct memories of going down the horror movie aisle of the local movie store when I was a kid and just checking out all of the, the boxes and the cover art. They were really, really neat, I thought, very memorable. Uh, there's something about horror that is very imagistic. Uh, it, it strikes a good memorable image. Uh, anyone who's looked through children's horror books, for example, at the illustrations probably remembers them pretty vividly. Um, and that gets at part of why horror is so effective and so memorable, I think. But in any event, like I said, um, I'm this terrified kid growing up having nightmares and watching horror movies. And one day I'm going through my school library, uh, I don't remember if it was in it was somewhere between the third and the fifth grade. That's kind of a hazy period, but uh, I found my first Edgar Allan Poe, and uh, I had a difficult time reading it at first. Uh, the first one that I read was *The Pit and the Pendulum*, and uh, of course, it's a classic. Like I said, I couldn't fully understand it at first. A lot of the words were foreign to me, but I got the idea, and I was spellbound by it. Uh, I liked, I think, most of all the the sensations of it the the way that he really made you feel the overwhelming darkness and the horror of that sensory deprivation that accompanies it you know every sound and every thought and sensation becoming magnified uh of course thought it was very well done i pretty quickly read the telltale heart i think in class at some point 
Um, but I, I believe the fall of the House of Usher and a few other ones in pretty short order. I really got to love him, read him a bit more in high school, uh, you know, just in, throughout my life. Uh, but I can distinctly remember going into the school library in high school and, and just uh, catching up on a lot of his short stories that I hadn't read before. So Poe was my introduction to horror and literature in a more mature form, but I've mentioned before on the channel that I was a huge fan of Goosebumps as a kid. Loved R.L. Stein, followed them religiously, thought he did a really great job with them uh, considering that they were kids' books. Uh, I found them to be very terrifying, very scary, very creative. And there were a lot of horror stories that came along the way. Uh, I picked up a random collection of horror short stories from Sam's Club of all places that I can remember being very terrifying. I vaguely have memories of a ghost in a, a bathroom or something making the, the toilets flush. That was pretty eerie. And the monkey's paw and a number of other ones. But it wasn't until I was in high school and started listening to Metallica of all things that I happened to be put on the trail of H.P. Lovecraft. As some of you may know, Metallica was influenced by Lovecraft in a couple of their songs early on, uh, The Call of Cthulhu and The Thing That Should Not Be, first and foremost. And uh, because of them, I became interested in him. And I remember going with a friend to the Blue Bonnet Library in Baton Rouge and uh, checking out a book on Norse mythology. And on that same day when I discovered what the Norse Fingalkna was, the kind of hybrid monster, I first read the H.P. Lovecraft story, The Nameless City, and totally fell in love with it, uh, checked out the book, read a bunch of his other material, and became a huge fan. I don't think that Lovecraft was quite the fiction writer that Poe was. Uh, I think that in some ways Poe was a better storyteller, but I think that Lovecraft was at least as great a horror thinker and uh, analyst of what makes horror resonate uh, to a reader. And I still think that his essay on supernatural horror and literature is the best summation of why horror works so well as a genre. Uh, that central idea that the oldest and strongest emotion of mankind is fear and the oldest and strongest kind of fear is fear of the unknown is very telling in why we not only produce horror in the first place, especially at a primitive level of society in myth formation and deep legends and folklore and fairy tales, there's this very strong underpinning of horror. And it's easy to see why, right? Because as Lovecraft started to note, there is an existential element in horror. Uh, humanity as it developed consciousness became increasingly aware that we occupy only a very small illuminated part of the world and outside of that light of human experience there is a very vast and unknown dark full of unseen creatures uh, the stirrings of which provoke very deep terror in the poor frightened defenseless human mind and uh, especially in the 20th century we become more aware of our tiny, insignificant place in the world, and that creates a kind of a, an existential fear in us as well. But yeah, I continue to be fascinated by horror to this day. I still read a good bit of it. Um, I have found that horror, in my view, works best in film form and in short story form. There aren't a lot of horror novels that I can point to as uh, being really effective. I do like Carmilla, I've mentioned before. I liked Dracula, but I thought that it was inconsistent. Uh, the The opening chapter was much stronger than the chapters that followed, for example. And I think that horror can work in poetry. It can work very well in poetry. And I think that sometimes very strong horror elements are found in poems that aren't otherwise considered horror, like The Second Coming by William Butler Yeats. I think it's a very horrifying poem uh, when one really looks at it. but of course, we don't tend to think of it as horror, but uh, again, I think that film and, and short stories work best as a vehicle for the genre because I think that sort of, as I've mentioned before, horror is uh, 
uh, an emotional form of storytelling. It is dependent on producing that very visceral reaction in the viewer or reader. And it's hard to sustain that over time. There are plenty of essays and, and I'm sure, you know, talks about this kind of thing. So yeah, anyway, just wanted to tell you a little bit about my favorite genre, uh, what got me into it, why I enjoy it so much. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. And I hope that if you're a horror fan, or even if you're not, you'll tell me why. Share a little bit about your experience with the genre. I'd always like to get a good discussion going. And I hope that you enjoyed. And if you did, I hope you'll like, share, and subscribe. And uh, in any event, until the next time, you know, I hope you had a good Halloween season. And I'll catch you later.